Hello class, so welcome to our lessons for today. So before we go to the next topic, we'll review a little bit on our topic on rectilinear motion. Right, so these are the basic concepts of rectilinear motion. We have discussed this already before, but I would like to uh, recall this part so that when we move to the next topic about curvilinear motion, uh, it's okay for us to, or easy for us to understand. All right, so from this illustration here in figure 2 uh, slash 2, we have to consider this uh, uh, particle P moving along a straight line. Okay, so this is a straight line here in this figure. So the position of P at any instant of time T can be specified by its distance S. All right, so this distance S measured from some convenient reference point O. So this point O, we call it fixed point on the line. Okay, so at uh, time t plus delta t, so at time t plus delta t, the particle has moved from, uh, uh, moved to p prime. So in other words, if the particle moves at this point going to this, spending at time uh, t, so spending at time t, okay, now, as it moves farther to P prime, so it spend a time uh, that is that is the increment of time we call it delta t. Okay, so the coordinates becomes s plus delta s. So it means that uh, the distance from O to P is s. Spending time equal to t, all right, and uh, as the particle moves further to p prime, so we have here the increment in time that corresponds to this uh, uh, increment of the distance or the position. Okay, so the change in position uh, coordinate during the interval dt is called the displacement delta s. Okay, so displacement delta s of the particle. All right, so this displacement would be negative if the particle move in the negative is uh, negative is direction. So if the particle moves from here to there or from O to to the left, so that would be negative. Okay, so that was uh, discussed before, and now we have reviewed this, and now we go to uh, velocity and acceleration. So the average velocity of the particle during the interval delta t, okay, so during this interval, is uh, the displacement divided by the interval uh, v, the average the velocity, uh, interval or average velocity v uh, sub e v. So velocity average is equal to delta s divided by delta t. So as delta t becomes smaller and approaches to zero, right? So as this delta t becomes smaller and approaches to zero, in the uh, approaches zero in the limit, so the average velocity approaches to the instantaneous velocity. Okay, so remember this terms class. Instantaneous velocity of particle, which is given by this uh, formula or equation v equal to the limit of the ratio between delta s and delta t as delta t approaches to zero or we can say that v is equal to the derivative of s with respect to uh, t and this is equal to s then you have uh, you see here there's a dot above s so it means that this is the derivative of the position s with respect to time Alright, thus the velocity is the time rate of change of the position coordinate S. So the velocity is positive or negative depending on whether the corresponding displacement is positive or negative. And the average acceleration of the particle during the interval delta t, uh, the average acceleration during this uh, interval delta t, is the change in its velocity divided by the time interval 
or we have a a v or a sub a v and that is uh, this is equivalent to delta v divided by delta t so as delta t becomes smaller and approaches to zero in the limit then the average acceleration approaches the instantaneous acceleration okay so we have another term here instantaneous acceleration of particle uh, which is given by this equation a equal to the limit of delta v divided by delta t as delta t approaches to zero or we have this expression here a formula that a is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time equal to v dot so there's a dot it means uh, first derivative now we have a single dot here above v so it means first derivative this is the first derivative of the velocity so we have the acceleration or we have a equal to the second derivative of s with respect to t or we have s double dot no, uh, at the head of s we have a double dot so it means that we can also get the acceleration by differentiating the the given uh, expression of the position twice all right so the acceleration is positive or negative depending on whether the velocity is increasing or decreasing and note that the acceleration would be positive if the particle had negative velocity which was becoming less negative and if the particle is uh, slowing down the particle is said to be decreasing all right so if you still don't understand this one class just refer to the previous video that i uh, posted no uh, that is uh, the same concept that I've, I've discussed and you have uh, another materials there that you can refer to okay so the acceleration is positive or negative depending on whether the velocity is increasing or decreasing okay so as mentioned uh, in the previous slide so i'm just repeating it here and note that the acceleration would be positive if the particle had a negative velocity which was uh, becoming less negative if the particle is slowing down so the particle is it to be decreasing uh, velocity and acceleration are actually vector quantities as we will see for our discussion on the topic curvilinear motion uh, that will begin in the article 2 slash 3 you know, if you look at your if you read the reading uh, assignment in uh, in Wiley so you will find the details there now for rectilinear motion in the present article, meaning this article, where the direction of motion is that of the given straight line path, so the sense of vector along the path is described by the plus or minus sign. So in our treatment of curvilinear motion, we will account for the changes in direction of the velocity and acceleration vectors as well as well their change or changes in magnitude so here we have an example it shows that uh, the sprinter will undergo rectilinear acceleration until he reaches his terminal speed now by eliminating the time dt you know, as uh, you have seen in equation uh, 2 plus 1 plus 1 Meaning from here and the first of the equation of 2 plus 2 meaning here the first one here so we obtained a differential equation relating uh, displacement velocity and acceleration so this equation is given by this so this is, this is our equation 2 plus 3 so V dV equal to A times dS or we have S dot then dS dot equal to S double dot dS. So they are just the same class. So here in terms of uh, V and A here we have in terms of S meaning our acceleration here in terms of V but here our uh, this is in terms of our acceleration is in terms of S the position. So these equations are differential equations for the rectilinear motion of a particle. 
So problems in rectilinear motion involving finite changes in motion uh, variables are solved by integrating this basic differential relations. And the position coordinate S, the velocity V, and the acceleration A are algebraic quantities. So their signs, positive or negative, must be carefully observed. And note that the positive direction for the V and A are the same as the positive direction for S. Alright, so remember those uh, things, class. Those are very important. We have here the graphical interpretations. So interpretation of differential uh, equations governing rectilinear motion is consider considerably clarified by representing the relationship among S, V, A, and T graphically. So in this figure, figure 2 slash 3, is a schematic plot of the variation of S with T from T or T1 to from time T1 to time T2, no? from time T1 to time T2 for some given rectilinear motion. So by constructing the tangent to the curve at any time T, so we obtain the slope, no? slope, the line that is tangent to this curve. We obtain the slope, which is the velocity. Uh, here is the velocity, V, that is the derivative of the position with respect to time. Thus, the velocity can be determined at all points on the curve. So you can find the velocity at all points in this curve. Okay. And plot it against the corresponding time as shown in this next picture. And similarly, the slope dv over dt uh, of the VT curve. So this is our VT curve class, this second uh, diagram. At any given or at in at instant gives the acceleration at that instant. So the AT curve, this is our AT curve here, the lowest part, can therefore be plotted as shown here. Alright, so th these are the different uh, plots. We have the ST ST curve, this is our VT curve and AT curve. So we now see that from uh, figure 2 does or 2 slash 3b, so meaning this one, that the area under the curve VT, no, this is our curve VT, okay, during the DT, during the time DT is VDT, which from equation 2 slash or uh, slash 1 is the displacement DS. Right? Displacement DS. Uh, consequently, the net displacement of the particle during the interval T1 and T2, these are T1 and T2, is the corresponding area under the curve, which is, so from here, we can uh, get or solve for the, the displacement, no, using this, no, from, from this equation here, so you just uh, manipulate, you can write, you can express here, V times DT equal to S, no, from, from, from this relationship, so we can write V, times dt, you just cross multiply dt. Okay, so we have discussed this before, class. So I'll just uh, try to give you a recollection. Okay, so from, from here, so this is the one. Uh, then we integrate both sides. Okay, so when you integrate both sides, and the limit now is from t1 to t2. So these are our limit. In terms of s, so for the left side, I just interchange the position of this so because you can write this also as ds uh, ds equal to vdt okay so integrating both sides so the limit for s is from s1 to s2 all right and then for t we have from t1 to t2 or 
So after integrating, we have here S2 minus S1. All right. And this is the area under the VT curve. So this is the corresponding, corresponding result. Okay. Uh, similarly, from figure 2 slash 3C, so meaning here, So we see that the area under the AT curve, this is our AT curve. That is during the time DT. During the time DT, so just consider this time a very small portion of time. You see here, this is our DT. Is a DT which from the first equation of 2 uh, slash 2, is equal to dv. All right. Thus, the net change in velocity between t1 and t2 is the corresponding area under the curve which is uh, taken from this relationship. So we have we use the this uh, equation here. Okay. So from here, so you cross multiply dt, so you have a dt. A D T which is equal to D V. Alright. And then you just uh, interchange the position. So write D V first. Okay. D V equal to A times D T. Then integrating both sides. So when you integrate both sides, so this is what happened. So for for the left side, when you integrate both sides, so the limit here is from V1, okay, so from V1 to V2, meaning velocity, velocity 1 to velocity 2, so it depends on which part of the curve that you are going to uh, take from, okay, so we have V1 to V2, and for, we have A here, this is a, a constant, so you have to integrate T, so when you substitute, you have uh, this uh, V2 minus V1, all right? V2 minus V1. So again, this is the area under the curve, this curve here, an AT curve. Uh, note that two additional graphical relations, uh, note two additional graphical relations. So when the acceleration A is plotted as a function of the position coordinates, coordinate S, like in figure 2 uh, slash 4, A. No, later I will show you the picture. No, okay, I'll show it here. So I'm referring to this picture here. So the area under the curve during the displacement ds is uh, ds which from equation 2 slash 3 is vdv equal to the derivative of v squared over 2. Thus, the net area under the curve between position coordinates S1 and S2 is calculated from this. Alright, so we have VDV. Okay, VDV uh, equal to ADS. So, there's if you look at the previous recording class, so you can see uh, how these two relationships were being derived. Okay, so from here, so we have the limit for V as V1 and V2 as because here we have A as constant and we have to integrate DS. So DS, integral of DS with respect to T, so we have S, then substituting the limit, ah sorry, yes that's S, substituting the limit S1 to S2. And then we have here the result on the right side, on the left side we have uh, one half equal to v squared v sub two v, v sub two squared minus v sub one squared, and that is equal to the area under the s a s curve. Okay, so here we have the a s curve, this curve here. Okay, now when the velocity v is plotted as a function of position coordinate s, now from this picture here, this are figure. 2 4 b 
So the slope of the curve at any point A, if I'm going to... Uh, So I cannot change this anymore. Anyway, so by by constructing the normal AB, so we have here this curve, right? Right. This is the curve. Okay. This is our curve V. Uh, this is acceleration versus S. We have here uh, velocity versus S. So when you plot that one, so you will get this kind of curve. So from here, so we have here the tangent line. So we have the slope, okay, which is dv over ds. Now, if you are going to uh, construct a normal EB, normal line EB here, this is a normal line, I mean perpendicular line, perpendicular to the tangent line. So we have what we call normal, normal EB to the curve at this point. So we see from the similar triangles, no, from the similar triangles CB, no, the line segment CB, this line segment CB here, meaning the uh, the the side of this triangle CB we call it segment CB divided by V horizontal divided by vertical is equal to this is just equal to DV over DS meaning this is the the base over the height uh, because they're similar why similar because this angle here and this angle are just the same okay so this angle here is 90 degrees this is also 90 degrees so this is this angle here is just the same as this. So we can consider these two triangles as uh, similar. Okay. So the concept is that uh, when you take this side divided it by this side, so that can be equated to so this side divided by this. So dv over ds over one. So that is still uh, dv over ds. Thus, from here we can solve for the line segment CB, which is equivalent to V times DV over DS. All right? And that is equal to A. So the acceleration, uh, which is the acceleration. So it is necessary that the velocity and position coordinate axis have the same numerical scale so that the acceleration uh, read on the position coordinate scale in meters or feet say will represent the actual acceleration in meters or in feet per second squared okay so these are the concept class we're just reviewing this because uh, we had already uh, discussed this before but just to recall it because we will be using this concept when we discuss our next topic so the key concepts here Right, so just to help you uh, remember everything, though I already uh, mentioned this before. So again, I'm summar summarizing it here, the key concept. So if the position coordinate S is known for all values of the time T, then the successive mathematical or graphical differentiation with respect to T gives the velocity V and the acceleration A. So in many problems, however, the functional relationship between position, coordinate, and time is unknown. And we must determine it by successive integration from the acceleration. Acceleration is determined by the forces which act on moving bodies and is computed from the equation of kinetics discussed in subsequent chapter. So depending on the nature of the forces, the acceleration may be specified as a function of time, velocity, or position coordinate, or as a combined function of these quantities. So the procedure for integrating the differential equation in each case is indicated as follows. So we have here constant acceleration. So for constant acceleration, when A is constant, so the first equation of 2 slash 2 you know, in the previous slide and 2 dash 3 can be integrated directly so for simplicity with s equal to s sub 0 this is the initial position of the particle v equal to v sub 0 the initial velocity and t equal to 0 designated at the beginning of the interval then for a time interval t then in the integrated equation becomes like this okay so you integrate dv 
all right uh, limit from v sub zero meaning the initial velocity to final velocity equal to a times the integral of dt or so after performing the integrals here we get v equal to v sub zero plus at all right so remember this formula class but you should know also where this formula coming from so it is coming from this no, from a equal to dv over dt then you cross multiply and integrate both sides then you will get this one and also we have the v dv now this is from acceleration right so acceleration with respect uh, acceleration equal to um, dv over ds times v then you you uh, cross multiply then you integrate both sides and you will be able to solve v squared so v squared is equal to the square of the initial velocity plus twice the acceleration multiplied by the by the difference of the final position and the initial position of the particle okay so again uh, remember this also now substitution of the integrated expression for v into 2 slash 1 uh, equation and integration with respect to t it will give us something like this after substituting if you cannot remember class you just uh, uh, revisit the previous vi video that i i uploaded to youtube and you will see you know how this uh, things are uh, coming up where it is where it is taken from all right so from here after substitution class no? uh, you just refer to Equation two slash one. Or you just when you watch this video, you just go back to that uh, previous slide, and you will see the equation two plus one, two plus one. Okay. After substitution, you will get this uh, expression here, and now uh, evaluating this integral with the given limits, uh, you will be able to solve for s. S is equal to s sub zero plus initial velocity times time plus one half of the acceleration times the square of the time. So these relations are necessary or necessar necessarily restricted to the special case where the acceleration is constant. So remember that special case huh, where the acceleration is constant because there are time class that acceleration is variable. Okay. So don't uh, forget to take down no, what is the uh, associated concept uh, when you use this formula here so the integration limits depends on the initial and final conditions which for a given problem may be different from those used here it may be more convenient for instance to begin the integration at some specified time t1 rather than time t equal to zero Okay, so we have a question here. The foregoing equations have been integrated for constant acceleration only. So remember this, for constant acceleration only. So a common mistake is to use this equation for problems involve, involving variable acceleration where they do not apply. Okay, class, so remember when you solve problems, uh, see to it first that it complies this requirement or the problem uh, comply this requirement that a constant acceleration involved but if the acceleration involved is not constant then you cannot use this okay so acceleration given as a function of time a equal to a function of time or a equal to f sub t so substitution of the function into the first equation of 2 uh, slash 2 gives f sub t equal to dv over dt and multiplying by dt separates the variables and permits integration thus we have this result okay so we have integral dv equal to f t dt limit from initial velocity initial velocity to final then the time from 0 to t or so after integrating we have v equal to 
v sub 0, initial velocity, plus the integral of ft dt. Okay? So, remember this. Then, from this integrated expression for v as a function of t, the position coordinate s is obtained by integrating again from equation 2 slash 1, which in the form, which uh, in form would be something like this, uh, integral of ds from, from this equation class. And then, or, so you can solve for s after integration, s equal to initial position plus the integral of v dt. If the indefinite integral is employed, the end conditions are used to establish the constants of integration. The results are identical with those obtained by using the definite integrals. If desired, the displacement S can be obtained by a direct solution of the second order differential equation. So we have here S double dot, meaning you are uh, differentiating uh, the function, the position function, twice. So, equal to, so you have here the result as a function of, still a function of time, obtained by a substitution of f sub t into the second equation of 2 plus 2. Alright, now for c, acceleration given as a function of velocity, a equal to f sub v. So, here we have a as a function of time, here we have a as a function of velocity. So, substitution of the function into the first equation of 2 slash 2 gives f sub v equal to dv over dt. So, which permits separating the variables and integrating? Thus, we have this. t equal to the integral of dt, limit from 0 to t, which is equal to integral of dv over f sub v. So, this results gives t as a function of v. So, we have here a t as a function of v. All right? Then, it would be necessary to solve for v as a function of t so that in equ equation 2, this one can be integrated to obtain the position coordinate s as a function of t. Another approach is to substitute the function of the function a as a function of v into the first equation of 2 plus 3, giving us v dv equal to fv times ds. Then the variables can now be separated, and the equation can be integrated now in the form of this one. So here, uh, we have to use more on the separation of variables class before we can integrate. Okay, so from this uh, equation or expression, we can solve for S here. S is equal to the, S equal to uh, initial position plus the integral of V dV divided by function of V. Okay, so another formula that you need to remember. At least, if you understand this process uh, and you forget, uh, you can go back. No? Or if you are in doubt if this equation is correct, at least you know how these things are uh, derived. Okay? So, I hope it's clear, class. And I think before we move forward to the next uh, topic, uh, it's better to have some examples first. Okay, so from this, you have to note that this equation gives S in terms of V. Huh? We have S in terms of V without explicit reference to T. So even if T is not given, but you are given V, the velocity, and then you can still solve for S. Uh, for acceleration given as a function of displacement or a equal to f of s. So substituting function uh, into equation 2 plus 3 and integrating uh, give the form. So give us this form. Alright, so after integrating, so we get this uh, formula here. The v squared equal to the sum of initial uh, velocity squared 
plus twice the integral of f of s ds, limit from s sub 0 to s. Next, we solve for v to give v as a function of s. So now we can substitute ds over dt for v and then separate variables and integrate in the form like this form. So from here, we can solve for t. No, t equal to the integral of ds over a function that is a function of s. Uh, the limit here is from s sub 0 to s. Okay. So I hope uh, you were able to recall what we had discussed before. We we did we have uh, discussed this already last time class. So from here it gives t as a function of s, and finally we can rearrange to obtain s as a function of t. In each of the foregoing cases. When the acceleration varies according to some functional relationship, the possibility of solving the equation by direct mathematical integration will depend on the form of the function. So in cases where the integration is excessively awkward or difficult, integration by graphical, numerical, or computer method can also be utilized. I'll take uh, some example. I'll just give you one example class and then I'll end the video. Then uh, continue with the next example in another video so that it won't be uh, a very long video. All right, so we are we are given here a sample problem. The position coordinate of particle which is confined to move along a straight line is given by S. Okay, so this is the equation S equal to 2t cubed minus 24t plus 6 where S is measured in meters from a convenient origin and t is in seconds. Determine a the time required for the particle to reach this speed or velocity 72 meter per second from its initial condition at t equal to zero. Okay then b the acceleration of the particle when v equal to 30 meter per second and c the net displacement uh, net displacement of the particle during the interval from t1 from t equal to 1 1 second to t equal to 4 seconds okay so this time we'll apply the concept that we just uh, have discussed so our solution here so the velocity and acceleration are obtained by successive differentiation of s with respect to time t. Thus, we have this uh, v. We know that v is just the derivative of the displacement. So we have here the dot means the, the, the position here. This is the position, functional position or displacement. Uh, we have a dot here means derivative. So derivative of this one, it means velocity. All right. So we're given v equal to so this is taken from differentiating this function class. So when you differentiate this, so this will go down, multiply by 2, so it will become 6. Then the power here, minus 1, so squared. Minus, so 24t, derivative of 24t is just 24. Then the you know, derivative of 6 is 0. So that's why we have here the velocity equal to 60 squared minus 24 meter per second. Okay? And the acceleration, so the acceleration, we know the acceleration class is just the derivative of V. Or second derivative, or the, you take the derivative of this twice, we get also the acceleration. Alright, so V, we know V is equal to 60 squared minus 24 meter per second. So when you take the derivative of this, we will get the acceleration. So that's why when you take the derivative of this, so this becomes 12T. Then derivative of this constant becomes zero. So we have A equal to 12t meter per second. Right? Now by substituting V equal to 72 meter per second into the expression of V. So this is our V here. Okay? It will give us this equation. We have a quadratic equation here. 
72 equal to 60 squared minus 24. So I'm manipulating this one. We can solve 40. Now you combine this one and then divide both sides by 6. Then uh, take the square root on both sides. So we'll get plus and minus t here. So we have t plus and minus 4 seconds. Okay. So we have two values for t here. So the negative root, meaning the negative 4, describes a mathematical solution for t before the initiation of motion. So this root is not is of not uh, physical uh, interest. No? Thus, we use the t that is t equal to 4 seconds, the positive uh, value of t. So for b, substituting v equal to 30 meter per second into the expression for v, so this is our v here, will give us 30 equal to 60 squared minus 24. Again, we uh, get the positive here. Uh, we have both plus and minus, but we take only the positive. We take only uh, t equal to 3 seconds. And the corresponding acceleration, uh, just simply substitute the time here, that is 3 seconds, into this equation. All right, and you get the acceleration equal to 36 meter per second squared. So for C, the net displacement during the specified interval. So we have here a delta S equal to S4, position S4 minus position S1. Because this corresponds to time equal to 4 seconds, this corresponds to time t equal to 1 second. Okay? So where shall we get the values here? I mean, uh, what equation shall we use? So since this is S, S, so we have to make use of this equation. Okay, so make use of this equation. So substitute here. At t equal to 4 seconds. Then substitute it here. At t equal to 1 second. Alright, so we have therefore delta S is equal to 12 e squared. Sorry, 12. So I'm sorry. 2 times t cubed. 2 times t. Oh, I'm sorry, class. We have to make use of this time. This one, this time. 4. Okay, so substituting. Our t is 4 seconds. So 2t cubed. So t is 4. You cube that one. Minus 24t. So 24 times t equal to 4 plus 6 minus. So same equation, class. But this time you use the one second because the condition here is time t equal to one second to time t equal to four seconds so these are times that we are going to substitute in this equation to get the difference the displacement the net displacement okay so we're looking at the net displacement here and we get after calculating we get 54 meters okay so this 54 meters corresponds. Huh? Um, this uh, represent the net advancement of the particle along the s axis from the position it occupied at t equal to one second to its position at t equal to four seconds. So you may refer it here from this graph. Then to help vis visualize the motion, the values of s, v, and a are plotted against the time as shown. So because the area under VT curve, this is our VT curve plus this curve here. Velocity with respect to time. Represent displacement, we see that the net displacement from t equal to 1 second to t equal to 4 seconds is the positive area. That is the positive area, delta S from time 2 seconds to 4 seconds. Okay, so we refer to this one, the positive area here. Okay, so that is from 2 seconds, you know, from this time here, t equal to 2, and for the time, t equal to 4 seconds. So this is the pos positive part. Less, huh? less, so this part here, negative area, delta, 
is from 1 second to 2 seconds. So, meaning, so you have to subtract this part by this. Meaning, this area minus this area. So, that is the net displacement. Okay? So, I hope uh, it's clear, class. And uh, as I've said, uh, this uh, uh, discussion up to this uh, problem number one, first problem of our uh, this uh, discussion and I'll continue in the next video for the next example. All right. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon. Bye.